Hello and welcome everyone to IT Pro Guide. Mohammed Niaz with you. In this video, we are going to cover the complete topics that comes in TLS in Exchange Server. TLS is a very important topic as it involved in the send and receive part of an Exchange Server. The topics that we are going to cover in this video is what is a TLS, how it works, and the importance of the setup of TLS in Exchange Server. Then we will discuss about the opportunistic TLS, forced TLS, and how to set up all these options also. A TLS is a security protocol that is transport layer security, so which provide privacy and data security for the communication over the internet. A primary use case of a TLS is to encrypt the communication between two endpoints. In an exchange server, as exchange server communicate with the clients and also with the different mail servers for sending and receiving emails, exchange provide TLS that adds and security to this communication. An internet is a connected world. You are connected to many other people in the internet and we use a common channel to communicate. So when you communicate with any other people over the internet and you don't have any encryption uh, between your communication, then the chance to get the data exposed into wrong hands is very high because you are communicating with the other party uh, in a plain text and it is easy if someone else got the information to read and understand what you are communicating. But once you have an encryption and a decryption involved in your communication, then the data that start from your endpoint get encrypted somehow then only the destination only the recipient can decrypt it so you might have some uh, methods to encrypt and decrypt and to use the keys and all so if anyone in between got this information then is not going to read the data because it is totally encrypted it is in an unreadable format it's it's known as cipher test so we can define encryption and decryption here an encryption is a process of converting the normal message that is a plain test into a meaningless message that is cipher test and a cipher test is not readable unless it is decrypted. So decryption is the process of converting this meaningless message that is cipher test into an original form. So an encryption is done using a key and an algorithm. So once a message is encrypted using a key, using an algorithm, then it get converted into a cipher test and while decrypting it use the same algorithm and the same key to decrypt and to get the plain test so that the recipient can understand the message. There are two type of encryption available. One is a symmetric encryption which means both the parties involved in the communication use same key for encryption and decryption the second one is asymmetric encryption which means uh, the parties that involved in the communication use different key the sender use one key and the recipient use another key for encryption and decryption so asymmetric keys are known as key pair so the keys are mathematically related together that is why we call it as key pair and one key is used for the encryption and the other part of the key is used for decryption in asymmetric encryption. So in a symmetric encryption as we use the same key for encryption and decryption both the parties are both the parties that involved in the communication need to know this key otherwise the recipient cannot decrypt the cipher test and get the uh, message. So in a symmetric encryption you have to share key somehow to the recipient and if you are sharing this over the internet then this may also get exposed to uh, wrong hands and also may leak this uh, private information. But the good thing with the symmetric encryption is it is very fast and it doesn't need much overhead on the network or the CPU resources. So the advantage of a symmetric encryption is it is very fast and it functions without any overhead on the network. But at the same time you have to share the same key with the recipient and if you are sharing this over the internet then it makes the symmetric encryption less secure compared to asymmetric encryption. So asymmetric encryption is totally different from symmetric encryption. Asymmetric encryption uses a mathematically related key pair which is a public key and a private key. As it named a public key is going to be available to anyone so which is used to encrypt the plain text that's sent by one person to uh, the other person. 
so a public key is used to encrypt the plain text and any message that encrypted with a public key can be decrypted only with the private key and vice versa so if someone encrypted a message with a public key as public key is generally available public key encrypted message will reach to the recipient and only the recipient who hold the private key can decrypt the message so if anyone got this message if the message got exposed to someone else in the internet unless he have the private key he have no option to decrypt the message and to read this message so only the person who hold the private key can read the message for example as you can see in this picture we have bob and adam communicating so adam want to send some confidential message to bob so bob will send a public key to adam and adam can encrypt his message with this uh, public key that shared by bob and that will be sent back to uh, bob so now bob have the message that is encrypted with the public key that he shared with adam and bob also have the second part of the key with him that is the private key now bob can decrypt the message and he can read the message think about anyone else in the internet he got the same message have no way to read this message because it is encrypted with the public key and it can be only decrypted with a private key so this is how the data is protected over the communication channel in an asymmetric encryption the advantage of a symmetric encryption is it is highly secure but the process is very complex so we need to take the advantages we need to club the advantages of a symmetric encryption and an asymmetric encryption and that is what a tl is actually so in an asymmetric encryption we said the security level is very high but the process is very complex but at the same time in a symmetric encryption the level of security is a bit low but the process is very faster so now we know about the advantages of symmetric and asymmetric encryption and also the false part of this encryption so we are going to take the advantage of both encryption method uh, and that is what actually the tls protocol so the problem with the symmetric encryption is sharing the key over the internet between uh, two people and there is a chance of losing the key and that may lead to break the data privacy so if we can share this uh, secret key first with an asymmetric encryption and after that if the two parties if they can communicate over a symmetric encryption then that adds the security part and also the fast communication uh, so this is what we are going to do in a tls uh, encryption so look at this uh, picture now here bob uh, want to communicate with adam so bob first generate a key pair uh, for asymmetric encryption and send the public key to adam now adam have the secret key that they wish to use in a symmetric encryption for bulk data transmission so adam will encrypt the secret key for symmetric encryption using the public key that provided by bob and send back to bob now bob have the secret key and adam also have the secret key so they both will switch back now to the symmetric encryption and they start communicating over internet using symmetric encryption because both of them have the same key now so this way we achieve the security also and we achieve fast communication so what we learned now is what happening in a tls communication so in a tls it take advantage of asymmetric encryption to uh, initiate the communication and to share the secret key and once they completed this secret key exchange they simply switch back to the symmetric encryption then they start communicating over the uh, symmetric encryption so that brings a capability of uh, uh, sending bulk transmission over the internet with encryption because in an asymmetric encryption as the process is very complex it's difficult to uh, send high amount of data encrypted using asymmetric encryption so we take advantage of both and that is what actually a tls protocol so let's see how the uh, process or how these uh, tls process works between uh, a client and a server so now i'm going to explain to you the process involved between the two endpoints that communicate over tls 
so once the connection established between the uh, client or server or between two mail servers in an exchange uh, server perspective or between uh, an exchange server and other mail servers so once the connection established the client sent a hello message to the uh, server and that includes the uh, supported ssl information and the uh, protocol versions and the cipher suits supported then the server sent a hello with one of the selected options that the client put in front of the server in the previous step so server sent hello then server sent this certificate so this certificate is an ssl certificate so as i explained before in the previous videos the ssl certificate includes the public part of the key so in an asymmetric encryption we use a key pair public key and a private key the public key is transferred to the client or the other server as an ssl certificate which include the public part of the key and also include the domain name the validity and other informations also so this certificate covers the public part of the key then the server hello done completed now the client have the public part of the key so what client do is client generate a pre-master secret key and encrypt the pre-master secret key using the public key that shared by server and then it share with the server then the next step from the client side is a change cipher spec that include the uh, negotiation options because there are different uh, cipher suits available like rsa defi hellman etc so based upon the uh, communication protocols that are available both and they go for some negotiations and and they come to a conclusion to use one of it so the client part has finished now now the server have the pre-master key uh, that they wish to encrypt the data for further communication now the secret key is only with the server and the client so that they can communicate using asymmetric encryption as it shared over a secure way that is asymmetric encryption so at this point the server will start communicating with the client over symmetric encryption they will switch to the uh, symmetric encryption then they use this new secret key that shared by client to the server over the asymmetric encryption to further encryption and they will start transferring bulk data over the internet using symmetric encryption now let us come to the exchange server and see where we can use tls so tls can be used between the client and an exchange server a simple example is our imap or pop3 then we can also use exchange and third party gateways a secure tls mechanism like we use with sendgrid for example then exchange server and the destination mail servers like any mail server that uh, the recipient address is listed so here we can use a tls to secure our exchange server and destination mail server communication but the destination mail server have to support tls that is the only a criteria here so when you look at the client and exchange communication or exchange and third party gateway or exchange over an office 365 uh, we have more control on both sides so we can decide what kind of uh, uh, configuration need to be done on the uh, client side and exchange server or exchange server and office 365 or exchange server and third party gateway then when it comes to the exchange server and the recipient mail servers we don't have any control on the recipient mail servers like gmail or yahoo or any other mail server this destination mail servers uh, may use different mechanism different security features uh, in addition with the smtp so our exchange server we need to tune in a way to accept to communicate smoothly and securely with all these different mail servers so we only focus in this video about the exchange server and the recipient mail server TLS configuration. So a TLS in an exchange server provides encryption and also authentication. So we said TLS will help us to uh, encrypt that adds privacy to the data communication. In addition to that, it also provides authentication. To understand that we need to know about public certificate and self-signed certificate so a public certificate is issued after a verification from a certificate authority it can be godaddy digicert or any other certificate authority so for example i am the holder of m365 proguide.com domain name so if i want to get a certificate 
for my mail.m365proguide.com I need to register in the GoDaddy then I need to verify it so for the verification they ask me to put some text record uh, to my uh, GoDaddy domain name uh, server so what you can see now on the screen is I have to to complete the verification of my uh, public certificate request I have to copy these values to my uh, GoDaddy DNS manager so that this make sure that the certificate authority that I am the owner of this domain like this you have to verify your ownership before you get a public certificate so that adds the authenticity the other type of certificate we have is self-signed certificate when we uh, set up our exchange server we got a self-signed certificate in exchange so it's a machine generated certificate not verified by anyone you can also create a self-signed certificate from your command prompt as it is not verified by any uh, certificate authority it is not considered as a good certificate for the communication so you need to have a public certificate to prove your authenticity but if you don't have a public certificate and you're using self-signed certificate in a communication then you don't have an option to prove your authenticity so in a communication you only consider encryption then a self-signed certificate is enough because it have a private key and public key in that signed certificate so you can use it to encrypt and decrypt your communication but if there is a demand in the second option you can see we put encryption and authentication so if there is a demand for encryption and you have to prove your authentication then you have to present a public certificate because public certificate a certificate authority verified and issued the certificate to you when we explained about the TLS uh, process diagram in the previous slides we only found one uh, parties exchanging the uh, public certificate so in a mutual authentication TLS communication both parties have to share the certificate to prove their authenticity so in this case we have to add another three lines to the uh, communication what I pointed out here so after the server send the public uh, certificate to the uh, server 1 to server 2 then the server 2 have to answer with server 2's public certificate so if both party demands authentication then both parties have to share their public certificate and it is not a self-signed certificate it should be a public certificate because this is to uh, prove the authenticity of the uh, parties that participate in the communication so we talked a lot about TLS now it is time to start with TLS in an exchange based environment so we know that not all email servers are same some email servers may have the capability to encrypt their communication some emails may not have the capability to encrypt their communication but an exchange server should be configured in a way to communicate with all the parties in general right because a gmail server for example may provide you an option to communicate over tls but at the same time one of your customer might have a small mail server and he that doesn't have the tls capable uh, mail server so in this case if you configure only to communicate over a tls encrypted line then you may end up with a small amount of uh, recipients and a lot of emails may bounce back to your account so you need to tune your exchange server in a way uh, that is capable to send uh, emails to all the mail servers in this world so you have two options so uh, you can mention that use TLS only but that will end up with a lot of emails bounce back because uh, not all email servers in the world have the TLS capability but you can put like this try for TLS so when your exchange server try to communicate with any servers in the world first it will try TLS so it will choose a secure way in the beginning if your recipient mail server is not capable to go for a TLS encrypted communication then use SMTP so we call it as force TLS if your destination mail server support TLS and your exchange server is restricted to use TLS only then you will be able to communicate over TLS 
So this is known as force TLS. You are configured in a way to only communicate over TLS encrypted channel. So in this case, when you communicate with a TLS capable mail server, as you can see in the picture, our exchange server will ask, can we talk over TLS? Yes, I'm ready to talk over TLS. You will be able to communicate. But at the same time, in a force TLS in, and your exchange server is trying to communicate with a uh, mail server which is not capable for TLS. In this case, when exchange server asks, can we talk over TLS, then the server will say no. At the moment, the communication will be disconnected. But when it comes to the opportunistic TLS, that is what uh, the exchange server try for TLS and if the TLS is not available, then it's going to use SMTP. So as you can see in the flow diagram, exchange server will ask for, can we talk in TLS? Yes, then it communicate over the encrypted channel. If a mail server is not capable for uh, TLS encrypted communication, then when exchange server asks, can we talk in a TLS encrypted channel and the mail server will say no, then at the moment exchange will say then let's talk using SMTP. So in this way, you are capable to communicate uh, most of the mail servers in the world and you will be choosing a secure line in the beginning. If it is not available, you will fall back to the SMTP uh, communication channel. In most of the cases, the opportunistic TLS will work for us. But there are different type of communication requirements uh, comes in a real world environment. So you need, as an exchange server, you have to receive email and you have to send email. You have to receive email uh, from the servers that only support SMTP. And also you have to receive email from the mail servers that uh, only support TLS. And some mail servers, for example, your partner organization, they need a forced TLS with additional uh, authentication mechanisms and all. So this is the picture from the receive side. And also your email server have to send email uh, to SMTP only supported server, TLS only supported server, and also to the which only support TLS with additional security capabilities. So when you prepare an exchange server based upon your environment, you need to manage all this type of communication. So in a situation where you have to send accept TLS and SMTP mail servers, you can enable opportunistic TLS in a receive connector that is by default enabled. So you don't need to do anything. And also in a send connector side, if you want to send the email to SMTP mail servers and also to the TLS mail servers, where we give a priority to TLS, if TLS didn't work, then it will fall back automatically to SMTP. So opportunistic TLS, you have to enable in the send connector this. So the opportunistic TLS option is enabled by default in the receive connector and the send connector. So your exchange server is capable to communicate over an encrypted channel if that is available if not it will fall back to the SMTP server but there are some cases where you have to additional requirement for example you have a partner organization and you want to make sure that the communication between these channels are uh, TLS encrypted in this case you can have a separate receive connector and send connector and you can force the TLS with additional security uh, parameters so that the communication to your partner organization will go through uh, a secure TLS encrypted line. So now we have two options to configure a TLS. One is opportunistic TLS and the other one is forced TLS. And when we configure it, we have to configure it for the receive connector and also for the send connector. So in the coming slides, we are going to see how to configure opportunistic TLS and also force TLS in the receive connectors and send connectors. The first thing that we are going to see is opportunistic TLS configuration in a receive connector. As I told you before, by default, Exchange Server is configured to use opportunistic TLS. So you don't need to do anything uh, to configure your receive connector as an opportunistic TLS one. But let's see what are the configurations in a receive connector related to an opportunistic TLS. So we have two points here to verify that the receive connector is an opportunistic TLS. One is TLS enabled in authentication mechanism then the require TLS option should be false. 
so let's verify it so i have logged into my exchange server and the exchange management shell is also opened so type get receive connector then identity then name of the receive connector so let's go back to the receive connector and for this example we will take the default front end connector which is the one receive email uh, from outside as you can see that the port is 25 so this receive connector we will see the configuration of this receive connector now then put fl so that it will format the list now if you go up you can see that the authentication mechanism have tls added so that uh, uh, it should support opportunistic tls but we have one more step to verify before you can see that the uh, basic authentication and basic authentication require tls so these are the other authentication options available which we discussed in detail in the uh, client access side so let's focus on the tls now now scroll down and find out a require tls where you will see that uh, the require tls value is false so yes require tls is false so this means the tls is involved in the authentication mechanism and the require tls option is false so our receive connector the default front end receive connector is an opportunistic tls configured receive connector now let's talk about the opportunistic TLS in a send connector. So by default exchange server is configured to use opportunistic TLS. So we don't have anything to configure as an opportunistic TLS configuration as it is there by default. But let's verify like we did in the receive connector. So in order to view the send connector configuration open your uh, exchange management shell then type get send connector following to that you type the identity where you have to give the send connector name so let me go back to the exchange admin center to find a name click on the send connector so we have two send connectors available already so we will use the internet send connector for uh, verification so type the identity name then following to that fl now if you look at the ignore start tls option you can see that it is false so you can see that the ignore start tls here is false that is one point and the second one is recure tls is also uh, false here now if you want you can disable the opportunistic tls it is not a good choice with the general send connector and receive connector you simply need to type ignore start tls then dollar true and if you want to return you can simply type false that will return it to the uh, opportunistic tls so we returned it and we can see that the ignore start tls is false so with this command you can enable or disable the opportunistic tls in a send connector now if you want to verify a mail server is uh, supported the opportunistic tls then you simply need to find the MX record as you can see that I found it from the uh, NX lookup command then what you have to do is you need to telnet then enter the mail server name here so let's copy the gmail mail server then enter the port number then enter after you get this message simply type the enhanced hello message with the domain name now it replied with a start TLS choice which means the Gmail server support opportunistic TLS. Now let us try to check our mail server which we just played with the receive and send connector. So you can do this from any machines. I just picked up my Windows client machine then telnet mailm 365 proguidecom then 25 you can see the start tls here which means the mail server m365proguide.com supports opportunistic tls so we're done with the opportunistic tls now it is time to talk about force tls exchange server provide two options to implement force tls the first one is domain security and the second one is tls auth level 
So let's talk about the first one, domain security. The very important point in a domain security is it works only between two exchange servers. So you need the other destination mail server also to be exchange server to work domain security. So in a domain security, we get a secure channel using encryption and also mutual authentication, which means both parties involved in this communication, that is both exchange server must provide a public certificate. So this usually applicable between two partner organizations to have a secure communication between the partners. So this is not a general configuration. It only configure between, for example, two financial institutions. They are partners and they want to secure their communication. Then they can use a domain security where the mutual authentication is implemented. So to do this, we need to enable domain secure enabled option in the send connector and receive connector. So let's see how to do that. We will use a separate send connector and a receive connector to configure force TLS domain security because this is not a general configuration. So let's just select partner option in a new send connector create wizard then uh, select MX record then in the address space I put exam portal dot live which is my uh, partner uh, mail server domain name so I have a separate send connector now that is sent mutual authentication so any email that goes to exam portal dot live will be uh, selected this send connector from exchange and it will be routed through this this send connector so now let us configure the force TLS domain security option in this new send connector. So the first command is set transport config send domain secure list. Then you have to add the domain that you want to be uh, domain security enabled. This you need to repeat for the receive domain secure list also. So run the same command and just change TLS receive domain secure list so that this domain is added now to the uh, secure list and the next step is we need to enable the domain secure enabled option so for that run a set send connector then select this send connector that is send mutual authentication then the domain secure enabled option you can see the send mutual authentication is our uh, send connector then in the domain secure enabled option add dollar true that will enable domain secure enabled option so we enabled our domain secure option in force tls and also we provided in the previous powershell command the domain we need to secure now uh, we are going to repeat the same step on the receive connector i'm using this uh, separate connector relay connector instead of using the default front end because as i said to you this force tls domain security uh, option we always do in a, a separate receive connector and send connector because this only work with the partner organization because it only work with two exchange uh, servers only so now we enabled domain secure option in the receive connector and in the uh, send connector we and also in the previous step we added the domain that need to be uh, secure so now if you uh, run the get receive connector identity and relay then format list you will find the domain secure enabled you can see that the domain secure enabled is true so that uh, further emails uh, coming incoming and outgoing emails will be uh, encrypted and also mutual authentication is also uh, need to be completed in order to communicate uh, with the partner organization now let's open the relay connector and uh, change the name to uh, partner receive connector something like that because a relay connector usually uh, not a good time for this uh, partner receive connector and you can see that i restricted this communication using an ip address there 192.168.0.107 so when you enable domain security force tls option you need to give the ip address in the receive connector for your partner organization mail server 
you cannot give a domain name like what we did in send connector so you have to mention the ip address there now the second option in uh, force tls authentication is tls authentication level uh, which is enabled using tls auth level so we have uh, three options in this force tls tls authentication level one is encryption only which means the communication between two mail servers uh, use encryption only method and you can also add a certificate validation to this method so encryption plus certificate validation will uh, provide you authenticity and also a secure channel then in uh, domain validation that is the third option a fully qualified domain name must be configured in the tls uh, domain so if you configure the third option that is a domain validation in your uh, exchange server for a force tls what will happen that when you start communicating with a, a second party uh, the certificate that they provided uh, to you to prove the authenticity it should contain the uh, tls uh, domain name that mentioned in the uh, connector so that is a third option so most probably the encryption option is more than enough actually uh, but if you want uh, to have a partner uh, secure communication then you can add a certificate validation and domain validation and that makes sure that the uh, communication between your these two parties are secure and leaking the information to a third party is very less when you use a certificate validation in addition to uh, domain validation also so i have a new send connector here send connector encryption only so let's get the details of this send connector for that uh, type send connector get send connector then encryption only add the identity switch then fl that is the format list so this will display you the information about this send connector where you can see that the tls authentication level is not configured anything so let's configure it one by one the first thing what we are configure here is uh, encryption only then you can put encryption only first uh, let's see how to configure encryption only so now you can see that the required tls parameter is false so we have to first we have to make it true so let's do that uh, just need to type required tls full colon then dollar true now the required tls option is enabled and then you can enable encryption only now if you run this you can see that the uh, required tls is true and also the tls authentication level is encryption only so the demand between these two parties is encryption only now the uh, next option we have is certificate validation in addition to encryption uh, we need certificate validation also for example then you can type like this tls authentication level we need certificate validation so in this configuration the communication is encrypted and also the authenticity must be proved then the third option we have is uh, domain validation in this case we need uh, to add the domain name to tls domain so let's configure it so replace the certificate validation with domain validation then uh, following to that you need to add the tls domain also so tls domain uh, for example i'm going to use uh, exam portal dot live so i will have a domain validation whenever i send an email to this uh, uh, server and the in in addition to the domain validation it makes sure that the exam portal dot live value is there in the certificate that provided by the uh, recipient mail server now to demonstrate from the receive connector i would like to create one receive connector so click on the receive connector then create a new receive connector so select front end and select partner because this force tls is all about uh, a trusted secured communication so force tls then click next i have nothing to change in the adapter binding so click next to continue then here instead of having all these uh, remote ips we have to give the partner 
uh, server IP address it can be a public IP or a, a local IP if you have a VPN connectivity anyway just give a dummy IP address to demonstrate you now therefore TLS or save connector is ready for further configuration we need exchange management shell so let's open the exchange management shell so get receive connector identity and enter the new receive connector name that is force TLS I have to add the uh, format list so that I will have all the information now it listed out all the configuration values of the new receive connector where you can see that the authentication mechanism is TLS so that is a fine but the require TLS option is false so we need to make it true so that this will be a false TLS receive connector so let's do that for that you have to uh, change from get receive connector to set receive connector require TLS then full colon then dollar true and you can also add the uh, permission group anonymous so that uh, it can receive uh, from outside users the user doesn't need to be available in your machine so now we're done with the require TLS option so this is how you can configure force TLS auth level in an exchange on-premises so let us summarize what we have learned in this video we started from what is a TLS and how it works we covered all the process and configurations involved in TLS for exchange server in terms of send and receive emails we found different options are available and how and when you can use these options in exchange server so that is all in this video thank you for watching this video for more videos subscribe my youtube channel